if I could um, talk about casting out and, if possible, teach people to cast out. Now, I'll be honest uh, with you guys. Initially, when I started getting people asking about this, I mean, this goes back four years of people asking me how to do this. Um, when I started going public with my story and talking about some of the experiences I have on the other side of the veil. And so I've had, I don't even know how many people, dozens of people ask for help on this. And I feel like it's time now, even though I'm going out on a limb with this because there, I already know I'm going to get some grief for it. Um, it's a very sacred topic, but it's a very important topic. And quite frankly, there are not enough people that know how to cast out. In fact, very few people do it. I've, it's been interesting for me how many women have told me they uh, just rely on their husbands to do it. And I'm here to tell you right now, ladies, that it's time to step it up. We are not just supposed to be relying on the men to cast out. Um, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we kind of learn how to do this in the temple, but not really. And so most of us have not been taught how to do this. Now, I was taught this through the Spirit and um, basically by watching the temple video and then the Spirit teaching me and being on the other side of the veil. So I'm, a, I'm an exception to that rule. I will, I will tell you straight out that if I relied on my husband for this, I would be a dead woman probably 100 times over in the last 14 mm -hmm. years. And so out of necessity, I learned how. And Eric, you know this because you've been around me for a, a few years now. So Right. Well, I'm assuming part of this is because people assume that you have to have the Melchizedek priesthood to cast out. Right. And you don't. You don't have to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to cast out. You don't even have to be a Christian, per se, as in, you know, having been baptized. Any son or daughter of God can put their arm to the square in the name of Christ and cast out devils and unclean spirits. Mm -hmm. That's the promise given to us. That's a power given to us as mortals here on the earth. The Lord has power and dominion over Satan and those who follow him. They must listen. We have power to crush their head, even though they're going to attack us. We have that power that we have been given, and we need to use it more. There are many members of our communities that are not members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who are taught this in their churches. They're taught this in their communities, and, and even some of the new agey stuff. They're more, I guess you could say, more advanced in some of this knowledge than many members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, because we have false traditions in our church that have been passed down. And it is time for us to break those false traditions, to remove the false beliefs, and to start getting into action. Because prior to the tribulations, it's bad. But once we go into the tribulations, and those portals are open on a whole new level, if anybody actually hopes to survive in a camp or anywhere else, they better know how to cast out. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I can't say it strong enough how important it is that you learn how to cast out. If you are having any kind of mental, emotional, or physical problem at all, this is your first remedy. When I do sessions with my clients, I invite my clients to say a prayer at the beginning of the session, and the first thing I do is I clear my space so that I know that I'm hearing, seeing, thinking, and feeling correctly through the light side, and I'm not getting talked to by the dark side. It's absolutely critical. For those of you that are, are energy workers, do any form of energy work, I encourage you to cast out before you start. If you're not doing that, I promise you, you're getting mixed messages. I promise that. I, you will. Because if you're going to talk to the light side, you're going to talk to the dark side. They get equal time opposition. Yeah. My understanding, Julie, is that here on Earth, that we're actually in their realm, that this is their home, basically. Yes. And, and so right. They were cast out. Right. And yeah. so I'm guessing that we're a little outnumbered here, that, that we're on their turf. And so at every corner and every turn and everywhere we are, mm -hmm. they're just they're just surrounding us. Is that true? Right. Right. So when you look at the premortal war, Eric, uh, we know that a third of the hosts of heaven were cast out to the earth. That doesn't count all the, uh, the familiar spirits, disembodied, unclean spirits that have contracted or made pacts with the adversary, either premortally or that have had bodies and are here 
trying to tempt and dissuade and destroy and work directly for the adversary. So we technically are outnumbered as far as how many of them can be assigned to us. But here's the, the kicker is um, that's the plan. And we have been promised that we can have protection if we ask for it. We get two bodyguards, two guardian angels that are assigned to each of us if we're here in mortality. And we can have many more than that if we ask for them. There are millions of spirits on the light side, light warriors, who are waiting to be put into action. They're busy doing, doing missionary work and healing and all kinds of things. But the minute we ask for it, the Lord will send them to help us. But we have to do our part. Due to agency, the light side will not cross those boundaries. The dark side does. So the Lord will assign them. And if you ask for that help, he will send them. But we have to be willing to ask. And we have to do our part. And that takes knowledge. And the other thing that happens with the adversary is that we're in a celestial state. So that's kind of what you mean. We're in their territory. But that doesn't mean we have to allow them into our space. This is a big earth. There's multiple um, spheres and dimensions within our space. And we can send them to a different sphere. We can send them to a different dimension. Now, I've had contact with multiple dimensions for several years. And I know that I don't have to allow them to attach to me or be within my auric layers or even within my house or on my property. I can send them to the pits and I do it regularly. I used to be soft on them. And I say that because I, I hate the pits. I've, I've been there. I've seen it. It's awful. It's terrible. I would never want anyone to send me there. But the Lord has taught me increasingly so in the last year and the last few months. He's been very firm with me in saying, Julie, this is war. They are here to kill you. They're here to destroy you and everyone that works on the light side with you. Therefore, if you're looking at a war strategy and someone comes into your home and wants to cut your head off and kill your children, are you going to let them sit on your couch? And, uh, and are, are you going to take somebody prisoner or are you going to let them loose and say, hey, you can't be in my house, but you can go to the neighbor's house and then come back tomorrow when I'm tired. Hmm. Right. Um, if you're sick, you're having dark energy influencing you. Are you going to sit there and take that crap from them? Or are you going to say, listen, I don't want these pathogens in my body anymore. I'm going to get rid of this. When we're sick and we're afflicted, do we take our medication? Do we go to the doctor? Or do we just kind of lay in bed and think, oh, well, if I die, I die. Or are we going to actually fight? I would hope that those of us who are listening to this, this podcast right now will hear me when I say, this is war. We've been at war for a long time in spiritual warfare. It is increasing. It's ramping up. What I see on the other side of the veil, it's intensifying on both the light side and the dark side. Think of the Star Wars and where we are with those movies, <laughs> right? The dark side is continually plotting against us. Therefore, the light side continually strategizes as well. We have been given powers and priesthoods beyond our descriptions, beyond our imaginations. And quite frankly, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we are underutilizing the priesthood. Mm. 